Hey, what's up, Octane family? I'm really excited because today I'm gonna to show you how I used Octane's output AOV system to composite the image that you see right here all inside of my 3D software in the live viewer without having to jump to something like After Effects or Resolve or Nuke to do these kind of more advanced compositing features. Now, today is not a full tutorial from beginning to end. I'm gonna be doing a follow-up on that very soon, but this is more just to kind of get you excited about how easy it is to use the output AOV system in Octane. I'll make sure to update that with a link in the description the minute that tutorial is out. And that will go through step one all the way to completion together so you can do this for yours. But I think a breakdown today will get you really excited about all the potential of output AOVs in Octane. So let me slide this render over for a little bit. And you can see here, I already have my Octane node editor launched. And this is specifically the node editor for our output AOVs. And so it's really easy to launch that um, just by coming into your render settings, going to the Octane render, output AOV compositor, which will allow us to do all of our compositing inside of Octane and just say node editor and we'll launch that. There we go. All right, let me give you just kind of a nice little simple basic breakdown of what I have set up here. It might seem complex for a moment, but when I break this down, you'll see that it's really rather easy. So I'm going to bring in my live viewer for this, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I was actually trying to achieve from this render and why the output AOVs really kind of helped me. So if you've ever worked inside of 3D and in Octane, and you're trying to get more control over your lights, I'm sure you've taken a look at some things like, you know, putting another area light in, moving stuff. But when you do that, then it illuminates some other area on your scene. So for this specific render, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have the car more lit and in focus. And I wanted to have the background begin to get darker. The problem I had is the HDRI that I used, uh, which I really liked how it helped light the car. It also really kind of illuminated and lit up the background a little bit too much. I think it was a cool look, but I wanted the background to kind of be a little bit darker have a little bit more contrast, give it like this overall Batman type vibe going on here with the lighting. And so I wanted to come up with a way to continue to use that HDRI to help light my scene. I added a couple area lights, while, which I'll show you in just a moment to see how like they're kind of functioning in my scene. And then I'm gonna show you how we actually do the Octane node editor with the output AOVs to control the lighting in my scene more specifically. So you'll see all I have here is I have an HDRI and I've got two area lights. That's how I'm lighting up this whole scene. So I have a front light. If I disable that, you're gonna see that it just kind of helps this front area kind of pop a little bit more to stand out. Otherwise, um, it all just kind of falls flat and there's no real central location to look at. So you can see here, it just kind of brightens up that front. And then I have a car edge light, which is an area light over kind of to the side, um, which helps this kind of left side fender stand out a little bit more as well. So if I disable that, you'll see that this area then kind of just like blends a little bit too much with like the background and stuff like that. So those are really just to kind of make the car pop a little bit. Now, if I slide in my output AOV system in here and let me just disable everything for a moment. So here is my, my kind of beauty. And if I just disable that, let me slide it down. This is what the render looked like without the output AOVs. Still, I think a pretty cool looking render, right? Like I really dig this, but what it's doing is it's really putting a lot of the attention on the background, right? Like the background is beginning to compete with the car and, and I don't want that. Like I want the background to support the car and make it feel like it's in a cool, interesting environment, uh, but it's a bit too heavy handed right now. And so let me enable this back on and let's break down just what it is that I'm doing to control this and how simple it is. Okay, so I renamed this beauty output. This is just a layer group node. And within a layer group node, you can just continue to add layers. Now it works from the top down. So any layer that's above another one will affect all the layers below it. All right, so the first node that I ha have here is just my beauty pass. It's just the, the raw, beautiful rendered image. Um, I did do a couple little things. I added a post-processing effect. You'll see that this just picks up some of the chromatic aberration as well as my blooms and glares from my camera. So if I enable or disable that, 
you'll see it's really subtle. You should, when I disable it, you'll, if you look here, I just have a couple little highlights that I wanted to add just a little bit of like flair to. So that one's really, really simple. Um, I also added a custom curve just for some basic color correction to this. You'll see if I enable or disable this, um, I just kind of boosted the contrast a little bit, pulled the like darks down a little bit more, um, as well as made the highlights pop a little bit more. So then I was like, okay, I wonder if there's a way that I can begin to control the background. Like how can I make that darker? I didn't just want to go into my material because obviously I could just be like, okay, I'll open that material up and I'll just darken that color a little bit more uh, in the material. But that would just make it so the back wall got dark and then there'd be a really harsh horizon line where the wall meets the floor where the floor would be more lit and then the background um, would in fact be dark, right? And so I can show that if I disable this here, right? So this is what that render looked like without all of this background adjustment. And all this is, is a layer group here, as I mentioned. And I created a layer system. So I thought, you know what? The way I can control this is through my Z depth. And so that's exactly what I did here. Let me disable everything. I'm going to disable all those. And so we're only going to focus on my Z depth for a moment. And you can blend all these separately and as a group. So here's our blending settings. I can change the mode from multiply, which I have it now to just normal. So you can kind of see what I came in here and did. So this was my Z depth. All right. So I added my Z depth node into here and I was like, perfect. If I can multiply this on top, I can get it so the background gets darker. Well, obviously if I multiply this, it's going to make the foreground darker, not the background uh, based on how it's set up. And so I was like, okay, I have to invert my Z depth, which is the next thing I did. So I added just a basic little channel invert node here. So if I enable that, you'll see now I flipped it so I can have my car be what's brighter and my background get darker. So let's put this layer group here, this background adjustment that I've got. Um, we're going to put this back on to multiply. So this was kind of the next thing that I did. And I was like, okay, inverting that and just multiplying this AOV of the Z depth here on top. It's cool, but it's a little bit too dark for what I wanted. And so I was like, okay, I have to do some brightness adjustments. I'm going to come back in here once again. I'm just going to keep toggling this back and forth so you can see exactly what I went uh, to do for this. And so I'm going to go to the adjustment brightness. I added this node in here. Let's enable this. And I just made it so the Z depth pulled a lot more white area from the car. And that way the car stood out a little bit more. So let me jump back in here and let's see what that looks like when it's multiplied sweet very cool now the car's standing out but i'm like oh the background is just like way way too dark um the other thing that i did was played with the gamma so i was like okay maybe i can mess with the gamma to to affect the background now that didn't really do anything for the background for me however it did help make and blend this transition even nicer um so it's it's subtle right if i enable or disable it you'll just kind of see that instead of it being a harsher line that transitions from kind of like my floor into my back wall, it gradates out deeper in kind of Z depth. So that's kind of what I played. If I, if I toggle this, you can kind of see what I was trying to avoid with something like this. And I'm just trying to blend it, but not have it overtake too much of the foreground. So this is kind of the value I put on there. It's subtle, but it's a little tweak. And then the uh, opacity, adjust opacity node was really kind of what took this to the next spot because the adjust opacity allows you to simply control how much you want of it, right? So this is kind of a cool look too, just darkening it a little bit. We don't have to go maybe as extreme as I had it, right? I had it somewhere in the 90s, which is still cool, but you can kind of split that difference and just make it a little bit darker. But how awesome is that? Um, this is a really kind of basic breakdown. Um, if you're wondering and you caught this, I don't want to dive too deep into it. You can see this is a render AOV, not the composite AOV. There's two different systems. One is when you actually render the image, it'll give you those layers that you can then use in, in post, whether you're using Resolve, Nuke, or After Effects or something like that. In order to have things like Z-Depth, you do need this enabled, but you don't actually have to render these layers out for it to work. This is all in that kind of final image. So we don't have to think about that too much right now. 
but there it is. That's as easy as it really was for me to set this up. Um, I'm really looking forward to the full walkthrough with you. And we've got many more things coming out to make you more comfortable with the output AOVs. I love not having to leave Octane and just do all this compositing right here.